Cupertino. Apple announces the M2, the next generation of Apple Silicon, just as with the M1 with the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13, and... Wait, what happened to the Mac Mini? Perhaps this is Apple's plan, so what gives? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. What happened to the desktops at WWDC? Well, for a while we've been hearing about a redesign coming to the Mac Mini, giving a slightly lower profile, especially given the huge amounts of white space sitting empty inside the current Mac Mini. And when you consider that the M1 also powers the very slim iPads Pro and Air these days, admittedly without active cooling, it's very clear that the Mac Mini, while certainly mini compared to similarly performant PCs, is way chunkier than it needs to be. There's a very good and very outdated reason for this though. When it was first announced, the Mac Mini was much taller than it is today, but with a smaller footprint. And that footprint was basically defined by the size of a CD-ROM or DVD. And we're introducing it. It's called the Mac Mini. We think people understood the iPod Mini, and we think they're going to understand the Mac Mini just as well. It's a new member of the Mac family. And this is what it looks like. It's very, very tiny. And it has a combo optical drive, a slot load combo optical drive, so you can not only play DVDs, but you can burn CDs as well. The fact that the G4 chips inside were not exactly cool running, which is why they gave it the height. These gave way to an Intel version that came in the exact same enclosure, and this is before the current familiar look arrived in 2010, with a design that better matched the rest of Apple's range at the time. All aluminium, all over the place. Still, it had that big old CD-ROM drive in the front though, and mechanical hard drives, and standard laptop sodium-sized RAM slots, so all of those things take up a lot more space than the current integrated version that Apple Silicon uses. They also used way more power, and hilariously, the 15-watt M1 Mac Mini still houses a 150-watt power supply. Seems a little bit wasteful. The designs we've seen for the Apple Silicon Rebirth of the Mac Mini show the same power supply connection as the M1 24-inch iMac, which is slightly more revealing than you might think. That iMac has an external power supply, which means this would as well, because you don't want to kind of mix and match with this and have full mains voltage on one and uh, and the other using uh, stepped down voltage. That That's not going to end well. But that suggests that the power supply not being in the Mini gives you way more space for cooling capacity than we would need at least for an M1 or an M2 chip, which means that you can at least, in theory, squeeze in something a little bit more performant the M2 Pro, perhaps. Now, the M1 range is bafflingly missing anything desktop-based with an M1 Pro inside. The only way you can actually get Apple's M1 Pro is in the MacBook Pro in 14 and 16-inch sizes, starting around $2,000 if you're happy with a binned version with a couple of disabled CPU cores and fewer GPUs, too. But why not offer the M2 in the Mac Mini and also the iMac as well as the M2 Pro for the people that aren't quite in the market for a Mac Studio? Now, we'll talk about possible price in a moment, but first, who would these devices be for? M1 and now M2 are really designed for simple day-to-day -day computing, even though they are capable of more, while the M2 Pro will basically double the graphics performance and add a decent chunk more multi-core performance, as well as what will presumably be upgraded media engines for video work. The M1 Pro models also start with double the storage of the M1 at 512GB, double the unified memory 2 at 16GB, as well as, of course, having the extra connectivity on those MacBook Pros, but the Mac Mini wasn't lacking that in the first place, and the iMac has already had its redesign, and they didn't bother putting any fun ports on there, just USB-C and Thunderbolt. Now, Apple only seems to like revealing one redesigned product per event. Uh, that is something that Mac's tech have brought up in the past, and actually that does make a lot of sense. So by holding back the Mac Mini from the M2 WWDC announcement, they could be aiming to showcase its new design alongside the M2 Pro and Max chips, which have a decent chance of arriving before the end of the year and could probably be going into those MacBook Pros and be the first chips produced on TSMC's 3 nanometer process. If you're interested in the performance that those could give, we did do a full video calculating that, which is linked up here and also at the end of the video, so you don't need to leave before then. So the lineup I'd expect in October would be the Mac Mini with its redesign and M2 plus M2 Pro options, iMac with its existing design with M2 and M2 Pro options, maybe even getting darker bezels for the M2 Pro versions. We'd also need to darken down the rest of it, but Apple seems to be doing weird things with colours right now, but they've never been good at that consistently. Midnight, though? I'm in. 
and then the MacBook Pros with M2 Pro and M2 Max chips inside, with Apple's Mac Studio getting the Max and Ultra options in spring of next year. Apple might well put a premium onto these M2 chips going into the redesigned Mac Mini, which would be something around, I don't know, $100 maybe? I think most of the redesign costs on the MacBook Air come down to those displays. But I think a $100 increase on this one and maybe a $100 decrease on the M1 might be a fair uh, price point. And then when we get up to the M2 Pro chips, bear in mind you're doubling the RAM and the storage on this. So let's be honest, we're probably going to be looking somewhere around the $1,000 mark before you get into an M2 Pro, maybe $1099. And given that difference, I think we would also be looking at around about a $400 to $500 premium on the iMac 2, which means it could start around $1899 or $1999, about in line with the smaller MacBook Pro. That seems about right to me. Anyway, do you agree that Apple will bring their pro chips to the desk this year let me know down in the comments and next your iCave answers monopolized today by randomness r randomness r asks iCave answers will we ever get a midnight blue or green macbook pro i would love a dark green that looks black or dark under different lighting just like the midnight blue black that's coming on the macbook air um, it seems weirdly that Apple doesn't seem to like putting interesting colours onto the Pros. Air seems to be like their fashion line now. Seems like the iMac and the iPad Air so far have been the interesting ones in terms of colours. I think we might stick with silver and space grey, but I would like to see some of those other colours come in too. Um, I just don't see it happening. Random Nassar asks, I cave answers, when will we be able to transfer data and files between iOS devices over Thunderbolt 4? Yesterday I had to put my 4K movie on an external hard drive and then connect it to my wife's laptop to copy it over even airplay was taking five to seven minutes if we could do it thunderbolt from laptop to laptop it would take merely seconds um i don't think they're particularly going to do that um you could do it over a network you could do it over um, shared folders uh, you could even use something like dropbox or icloud uh, and that would all work just as well but the vast majority of people are not moving 4K movies between devices. It's just not a thing that people are doing as much these days. I know content creators do a little bit more, but in terms of the vast majority of the public, they are using streaming services. That is the reason that Apple has moved away from selling tracks on iTunes primarily to Apple Music streaming. And the same with things like Netflix and HBO. And people are just not really buying movies on iTunes anymore or on physical media. Marcy Gavalchek asks, I cave Dave, I cave answers. Nostalgia answers. I wonder what is the oldest Apple device you could airdrop to or from currently supported devices? So anything that is currently supported with the latest versions of software absolutely is. Um, airdrop was actually introduced with macOS Lion and I think it was iOS 7 at the time, iOS 6, iOS 7, something around there. I think it was 7. Um, the oldest devices that you can do it on would be uh, in terms of iOS. It's the iPhone 5, it's the original uh, iPad mini, the iPad 4th generation, I think. Uh, the 2008 MacBooks are the oldest uh, devices in general that you can do it on, but you can't do it for some reason on the 2008 MacBook 17-inch, but you can on the other sizes, so I'm guessing it's something to do with the Bluetooth versions that are in there, but uh, yeah, that is the answer. Thanks, Wikipedia. Randomness R asks, IK answers, you mentioned that the 14 Pro Max screen size is going to 6.9 inches in one of your videos responding to my question. However, a lot of YouTubers are still saying 6.7 inches. Can you confirm this? Um, from what I can see, the device is staying the same size, but the bezels are shrinking. That's been shown on multiple renders, and also we've seen the... Uh, the actual screen surfaces, the digitizer surfaces that have got those thinner bezels on there. So that seems to be what we're seeing. Nothing's confirmed until Tim Cook walks out on the stage and shows you it in his hand. Random Nassar asks IK Vance, any screen estimate for the rugged flat-edged Apple Watch Series 8? I'm hoping for a 48 to 50 millimeter. That would be awesome as it's meant for athletes and they can make the watch a bit bigger and chunkier for that all-day battery life. That's the dream watch I would get. Let's just run this back a little bit i don't think that the square edge version is the rugged one the rugged one is the series 7 we've had that for a year that's as big as that one is and i don't think it's going to change uh, as far as i understand it i think the uh, the display panel that's in the series 7 is the same one that will go into the series 8 um even if it does get the flat finish because it looks like it's a flat oled that is under a very thick chunky glass that is the rugged fullness as far as i can tell so don't expect to get any bigger size 
places, I don't think, than that. I have reached out to Ross Displayman Young to see if he has any information on this. He has mentioned three sizes, but my understanding is that that would be the, the current SE, the 41 and the 45 millimeter that we have right now. So a quick exclusive here, uh, just as I'm editing this, uh, we get a response from Ross Displayman, and he said it is larger, it's 1.99 inches, which is massive, that's 50.55 millimeters, according to Siri. Don't know which watch this is going into. Uh, Apple Watch Max, Apple Watch Plus, Apple Watch Pro. Probably not rugged. Randomness asks, I cave answers, do you think they will release another green iPhone 14 Pro Max at launch or in the spring like they did yesterday? Literally, the color is one of the reasons to upgrade. I'm currently rocking a midnight green iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, Very difficult to know. We don't see the, uh, the sales numbers. I haven't actually seen any of the green ones out in the wild. I am going to um, the Apple Store on Wednesday, so I will take a look at what they look like in person. Um along with the Sierra Blue, which I was uh, knocking on my live stream the other day. So uh, let's let's see how they look. I don't see Apple doing more than kind of four colours again at launch, and uh, I think the purple is going to be the exciting one this time. That's what we're understanding so far, at least. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you to all the beautiful Patreons over here. And if you've got a question to ask in a future show, hashtag iCaveAnswers down in the comments section, and I'll get round to it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.